Hi, I'm here with the legendary Steve Downs. Um, hello. Hello. I'm hello. fine, thank you. you know, yeah, you're feeling good yeah. this afternoon? Well, I'm not feeling completely legendary yet, but <laughs> <laughs> after a 24-hour flight, but I'm working on it. So. Yeah. Did you get much sleep last night? I did. I slept like a baby. Well, that's so. that's yeah. excellent. Yeah. Now, I'll go dive right in. I'll start right off. Um, so, did you ever expect the Halo series to become as big as it did when you were starting out? No, and I wasn't the only one. Uh, I think when Bungie created the game, uh, I don't believe there were even any plans to do a second game. Uh, I think it was the overwhelming response to the first game mm -hmm. that they all sort of realized that they had a tiger by the tail. And for me, it was, it was only the second video game I'd ever done, and uh, having been completely unfamiliar with the gaming world at that time, and this is back in 2001, um, I, I, it was just another job. It was a, it was a two-day job. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was like nothing I had ever done before, but I had no vision that this was going to be an ongoing uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until uh, literally about six months after the game came out, I was visiting a friend uh, down in Florida, and his kids were, were playing Halo. And, I, and when I say I had forgotten about it, I had forgotten about it. And I walked through the living room, and they're playing the game, and I, I mentioned to them that, that uh, you know, that's, I, I think I, I voiced a character in that game. And the kids are like, what? You know? <laughs> And uh, I said, yeah, well, well who, who was it? And I said, well, you know, I don't remember his name, but I think he was kind of the main guy in the game. And they said, Master Chief? And I was, yeah, yeah, it was Master Chief. Well, within 15 to 20 minutes, there were 30 kids outside his door, mm -hmm. all carrying Xboxes or copies of the game or whatever, wanting it signed. And that was the, my sort of aha moment that, mm -hmm. that we had, uh, you know, like I said, had a tiger by the tail and this, this was going to be. Now, again, you know, Halo 2 was a gift, but there was, again, no thought that there would, this was, you know, here we are some 15, 16 years later, and it's still going strong, and uh, nobody had any idea that it would be the game changer that it, that it really became, not only for, for Bungie at the time and later for Microsoft, but for the video game industry as a whole. I mean, it mm -hmm. really, you know, raised the bar on, mm -hmm. on what could be done with video games. So how did you deal with that, the, the growth, the massive growth and the recognition that you got after that from, you know, a couple of kids in the living room not knowing who you are to yeah. the renown that you have now? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, humbling, first of all, uh, and, and uh, it, it just, it, it, it introduced me, first of all, to the, to the gaming culture, mm -hmm. which I had no... Uh, uh, familiarity with it at the time and I'm still you know I and I and I will say it with no reservation I'm lousy at Halo <laughs> I want to tell you I the, the, the very first time I ever made an appearance on behalf of Master Chief was at a uh, a game store opening in in Florida and a guy asked me to to uh, to come down and and you know make an appearance and sign autographs and whatever and I said, um, you know, I wasn't sure, you know, I don't really play the game, I, you know, what am I going to contribute and, and all this. And now the, I was in Chicago and it was winter and the game was, the game store was in Florida. So I said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, but I said, I, uh, you, you have to know, first of all, I don't play the game mm -hmm. and I don't dress up as the character. So don't mm -hmm. ask me to do those things. So uh, he said, fine. Well, of course, he completely ignored that when I got there and unbeknownst to me, they were playing, uh, they had a Halo tournament, and the winner was going to play me, you know, in the game. And I said, dude, I don't, I'm lousy. I, and he <laughs> says, don't worry about it. What we're going to do is you, you hold the controller in your hand and just hit buttons. We're going to have a guy sort of, it was kind of like the Wizard of Oz, uh, like a guy was going to be behind the curtain <laughs> who was actually controlling my, was controlling wow. Master Chief. So an 11-year-old girl won the right to play me at Halo. Now, she doesn't know that there's a pro behind the curtain. I'm just sitting here holding the, and, and so they, we start. He, we lasted about 15 seconds and this girl just mopped the floor with us. <laughs> no way. You have never been more humbled in your life than to have an 11 year old girl give you one of these. <laughs> really? Master Chief, really? 
That's I, I, I came to find out just recently, I was talking to uh, the, the guy who, who actually brought me down to, uh, for the game store opening, and I, we, we were sort of reminiscing about the story, and he said she went on to become a professional Halo player. Oh, and well, just recently retired, surprised. you know, from 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 professional gaming, and had gone on to make quite a career. But so now I don't feel so bad. And, you know, at least she was a budding pro. Absolutely, <laughs> at the time. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, so obviously you have done other things, but Master Chief is is he the character that's closest to your heart? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's. Uh, you know, the blessing about being able to do a recurring role, which up until Halo I had never done. I mean, I've done, you know, some commercial work where you, you're on a campaign and you, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll do several, uh, you know, commercials maybe over the course of a year or two years or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's different than doing a, a character who has a heart and a soul mm -hmm. and a story. And the interesting thing, you know, when, when Halo 1 and Halo 2, you know, I got a sort of a brief synopsis of what the Halo universe was and who Master Chief was and, and all that. But, you know, as you know, and anybody who's followed Halo um, through the books and, the, and all mm. the other ancillary things away from the game that have developed these characters, uh, the, the, the cool thing is, is that, 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 you know, he has a whole story. He has a whole story from the time he was a child mm -hmm. until now. And when you're able to bring that to the character in, in recording the later games, especially three mm -hmm. and four and five, uh, that's fun. I mean, that's when you really get to stretch out and, mm -hmm. and try to do some things with the writer's help and the director's help and all that to, to uh, you, you know, be able to get, breathe life into this guy mm. uh, that, that has been, uh, I mean, I, I, w when it comes time to do a Halo game, it's a very exciting time for me because it's like, all right, I, we get to put the Molnar on and the helmet on <laughs> and go at it again because, uh, you know, and the story evolves and, and that, that's part of the fun of being able to do it. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Um, so I asked Jen this, so it'd be interesting to, you've obviously been asked this quite a lot of times, mm. but it'd be interesting to just ask, having asked her this, how you answered versus how she answered. So how do you interpret Cortana's and Master Chief's relationship? That's a very good question. And sometimes I get in trouble with this because it, it, it's, <laughs> it's uh, but I, I, to me, it's one of the most unique parts about the Halo story. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of things go into making Halo the success that it, it has become. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the most interesting things about it is the relationship between Cortana and Master Chief because it's it's so multi-layered. Mm -hmm. uh, on one hand, they are, you know, sort of soldiers in arms, mm -hmm. right? They're 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 you know they they, they go through these experiences together. Uh, you know, there's also a sibling type relationship to it, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, literally because. It was Dr. Halsey who created Cortana. Mm -hmm. It was Dr. Halsey who, for all intents and purposes, created Master Chief. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's very much of a, of, a, of a sibling relationship there. And then I think, uh, and, and this came to light, I think, somewhat in Halo 4, is, uh, you know, the, there can be a romantic relationship there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you have these, these sort of different levels of, of mm -hmm. how they deal with each other. Uh, that, that I think makes it really exciting and then it becomes up to the interpretation of the player. Mm -hmm. You know, he or she ultimately decides what they want that relationship to be. Mm -hmm. But I see it as, you know, in all these, all these, all these levels that, that I, think, uh, I, I think just make it a rich story. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's why people care so much about these characters, both individually and how they work together, mm. is because of the of the fullness of that relationship. Yeah, that's lovely. Mm. She um. What did she say? We, do you want Do you want to know what she <laughs> yeah, said? What did she say? She said that they have a very interesting codependent relationship. Mm. It is multi sided. It is it's very similar to a Doctor Hoover and his companion. Ah, that's, a, that's an excellent, uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, especially... I'll steal that next time. Really? <laughs> well, the, the example that I gave was Matt Smith and, uh, Matt Smith's Doctor and Amy Pond. Yes. 
Yeah, I can see that. That's a that, that's an excellent correlation. Yeah, I, yeah. I can see that for sure. And I, I love that. I love that it doesn't have to be romantic. Right. It doesn't have to be, yeah. but it can be. It can and be. And it doesn't have to be, you know, brother, sister, but mm -hmm. it can be. And like I said, and they're obviously, uh, you know, partners in arms. And, and, and it's, so that it's all of those things together, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. Lovely. Yeah. And to wrap up, I just wanted to ask you, how have you found Australia so far? Well, lovely. I was here uh, about ten years ago on 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 just a vacation, and and we were in in uh, in Sydney and Alice Springs, and then I was able to uh, uh, do some scuba diving, you know, mm -hmm. on the on the reef up in uh, Cairns, and uh, that was a thrill, you know. Uh, although my my uh, when I was coming to Australia, my um, you know to to sort of learn more about it because I'd never been here was was Bill Bryson's book. Uh, about Australia, and I, I remember reading one of his first lines, which says, "There are more things in Australia that will kill you than any place <laughs> else on Earth." And I was like, "Great, <laughs> let's go!" But I love it, and I and I love the people. I, it just, yeah, I think it, it has, uh, um, and and that's certainly been in my experience since I've been here this time. Is is that uh, you know the people of Australia are, are uh, um, I, I just think they're, it's it's a great attitude and great folks, and it's they're they're fun to be with, and mm. and they're, they're and everybody's always so warm and welcoming and inviting. It's it's uh, I, oh. I I'm just sad it's so far away. Although yeah. maybe because it's so far away, <laughs> is what what uh, you you know you're 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 able to maintain your 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 own identity without being. Uh, uh, you, mm. you know, corrupted Influence by <laughs> by, by uh, <laughs> other things. So you know, I, I think it's a great place. Is there anything that you've picked up, like any Australianisms or? Oh, what was the one we? Uh... I'm not here to fuck spiders. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say that? Yes. I'm not here to fuck spiders. <laughs> Can you please turn to the camera and say, "I'm Steve Downs, and I'm not here to fuck spiders." All right. This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief. And I'm not here to fuck spiders. <laughs> that, is, that is amazing. Thank you so That'll much. That'll probably get me an untold amount of trouble. <laughs> that is so <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Um, Australians, they're very, uh, they don't take swearing or cussing. Cussing, yeah, as, as we call it. Yeah. As, uh, as seriously as Americans, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. It's uh, yeah, we, yeah, we take it very. You know, there's oh, you can't say now. Now, could I? Can you actually say that on television? It's certain television shows, yes. Is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. see that. Uh, other than the cable shows and, and you know HBOs and that kind of thing, that would be absolutely a, mm. a non-starter. So after yeah. about eight p.m. Okay, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's yeah. good to know. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. So keep all the swear words inside until about eight yes, p.m. Yes, I will. I, will. I, I can do that. Yeah. And yeah. you can let it out. Yeah. Okay, well, it's been so lovely. Well, oh, thank I might you. actually ask you one more question, yes. actually. Um, what was I going to ask you? Oh, gosh. About the, uh, about the strike? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. So prompting. Prompting. How, how are you uh, affected by that? How are you interpreting it? Well, uh, for those who may, and it's probably not common knowledge in Australia, but uh, for the last year, there's been a, a strike. Uh, with the video game uh, producers, uh, the top video game producers, not all of them, uh, and, and the uh, actors union that represents uh, uh, voice talent, which is uh, Screen Actors Guild, it's called SAG-AFTRA, you know, of which I'm a proud member of. And uh, the, the, the main issues are, um, you, you know, the video game industry has become a multi-billion dollar industry. When, when we first started doing Halo and before that, it was, it was a, a, a uh, you know, sort of a boutique thing. Uh, and voice talent would usually be the writer would do his own voices or they'd call in a secretary and she would voice something and then mm -hmm. it just wasn't taken seriously because there was no real story. It was, you know, I mean, it started as Pong. I mean, it was just, you know, <laughs> bloop, bloop, bloop. and then, you know, Mario Brothers with little sound effects. Uh, and it became much more than that. And I think Halo was a driving force in terms of, of that the story became mm -hmm. as important as the gaming mm -hmm. part of it. Uh, and that's when they started to use professional actors and, 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 and people who do this for a living. So here we are many years later. Um, you know, these games are basically printing money. Mm -hmm. And the voice talent is, is, is asking for very, very reasonable uh, 
considerations in that, mainly because in the, in the, in the commercial world and the film and TV world, voice actors and on-camera actors get residuals. Mm -hmm. So the longer it runs, the more places it runs, there's a little something in it for the actor as well. With video games, that's not the case. You're paid once and that's it, no matter whether it sells 10 games or 10 billion. Mm -hmm. So we proposed a uh, sort of a bonus structure so that if a game sells, I think the first mark is if it sells 2 million mm -hmm. copies, uh, the actors involved get a little bonus, and it's, 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 it's nothing outrageous. And then if it sells four million, you get another, and, and up to eight million, and then it caps off at eight million. Mm -hmm. And then there was also I issues uh, concerning vocal stress. Sometimes with video game acting, it, comp it, it, it's, it can require a lot of stress on your, on your vocals. We, mm -hmm. we, it, it, it's not so much for me, it's not really the case with me, but with a lot of actors, we do these scenes that are called, I call them the death sessions. It's when your character is getting killed about 55 different ways. <laughs> and you have to come up with reactions to mm -hmm. that. And sometimes, I mean, you do that on, on an hourly basis and it can create mm -hmm. some serious vocal problems mm -hmm. that may prohibit you from working Mm -hmm. after that for days or weeks and sometimes it can be permanent and so we wanted some consideration to make sure that actors weren't put in that position of, of doing real damage to their mm -hmm. vocal cords and then the third thing was uh, with video games because there's a lot of secrecy involving the, the games in pre-production oftentimes you don't know what game you're working on mm -hmm. until it comes time to be in the session. Mm -hmm. Now you may have an issue with, with you know, maybe you don't like, uh, uh, you know, games that have a lot of violence in them or, or, you know, Grand Theft Auto. Maybe you have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. And that would be something you would like to know before you commit to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, so these are the, the main issues that, that we're trying to deal with and the, uh, some of the of the big uh, video game producers and developers have just flat out refused mm -hmm. and and won't even negotiate the issue mm -hmm. and in fact come up have come up with some of their own proposals that are downright ridiculous and some of them are even illegal. Wow. So uh, it, it's be you know this has been going on for a year and um, and 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 we would like to have at least some be able to sit down at the table and have you know, some reasonable give and take mm -hmm. to be able to work this out because mm -hmm. there's really no reason a, 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 an industry as successful as video games have become mm -hmm. uh, cannot come to the party a little bit and, mm -hmm. and, and... That has to be give and take. Yeah, there, there, and that's really all that's being asked for and, and so far it's gone nowhere and it's, it's already the longest strike in the history of the union, wow. and it's gone on well over a year, and we're hoping that that it'll be it'll be resolved soon. But uh, like I said, we're you know we're really the the requests and the demands uh, that that we're making are completely within the realm of mm -hmm. being reasonable. And we need to get it sorted out because we need a Halo Six. We need a Halo Six, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and hopefully it'll be resolved way before that. But but it is, uh, and and again, you know, it, for somebody like me. And, and people who are lucky enough to have, have done sort of these iconic roles. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's nothing that really affects, that's gonna change my world one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But it's the everyday actors mm -hmm. who are getting small parts in games every once in a while. And you know, people have this idea that like, oh, these guys are making tons of money. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't make tons of money at all. And, uh, and usually have to supplement with all kinds of other work, mm -hmm. as most actors do. Yeah. Um, so it's for those people who really, you they know. Need this. Who need this. I mean, you know, if, if I come in and do a session and I say, you know what, my, my voice is starting to get weak, session's over. There's no, no, nobody's gonna say, well, you gotta do it. You know, because they, they want to protect the franchise as well. But for, mm -hmm. you know, some unknown guy who's coming in to do a small role, he doesn't get that, you mm -hmm. know. He doesn't get that, that kind he, of treatment. And they deserve. They, 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 they do deserve it. They and, deserve and that's all we're really asking for is, is reasonable treatment. Absolutely. And you would we, like the other side to be reasonable as well. And hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll come to some sort of uh, arrangement at some and point. And quickly. And quickly, yes, very quickly. <laughs> well, it's been so lovely to have you, thank Steve. You. Thank you so much. Well, You've thank been you very much. Legend. Well, I appreciate and that. And that means 
something very endearing well, in Australia. Good. Oh, good. That's you good are to know. A legend. That's good to know. Well, thank you very much. Thank it's you been so a, it's much. been a pleasure. I've and enjoyed it. It's been it. lovely. So that's our interview with Steve Downs. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. That was.